what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel appreciate all the love and support welcome back to Fauci cinema and today i am going to be talking about some 80s cheese i'm talking the cheesiest of the cheese like this cheese been sitting on the bottom of a pizza box for years that's how cheesy this is it's kind of gross kind of grimy cheese but this is a staple of my childhood the movie i'm talking about today and that is 1986 stephen king directed maximum overdrive let's cruise right into this bad boy like i said welcome back to the channel um if you are new here definitely make sure to hit that like button on the video it means a lot helps me get out to the algorithm it is always appreciated. Definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can join the Fudge Lovin' family and hang out with us all the time. And another thing, um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, also, you can find me over on my freshly made Patreon page. I got a couple different tiers over there. Uh, a bit for any budget. If you're willing to uh, go a step above and beyond to support me, and everything that I am trying to create here on Fauci Cinema, that is also greatly appreciated. And also, if you don't want to do that, you just wanted to make like a one-time thing, you can go over to buymeacoffee.com. I will leave both of those in the description box below. Uh, you can check them out until your heart's content, and I greatly appreciate it. But today, I am talking about the 1986 classic Maximum Overdrive, starring the one and only Emilio Estevez. Looking so sexy and sweaty in that nice truck stop, you know, the diner. He's back there making some dippy eggs and stuff, you know. I don't know if everybody knows what a dippy egg is, but that's what I call them up here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Yins better understand what I'm talking about. Yins. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, it, it focuses on, obviously, he he's on parole. And this is the only job I guess he could get working at this shitty-ass truck stop in North Carolina. The Dixie Boy, I believe, is what it's called. Um, this movie also stars, who do we got here? We got Pat Hingle, we got Laura Harrington, Yergley Smith, um, this had a budget of $10 million, and let's take a look and see if we can see how much money this movie actually made. Because it got a Rotten Tomatoes score, ladies and gentlemen, of a whopping 15%, so it is severely rotten, and, you know, it's really hurting my feelings right now. Uh, I grew up with this movie, I watched this a lot as a kid. Um, obviously, I didn't come out till it didn't come. It came out before I was born, so obviously, it took a couple years after I was born till I actually decided to watch this movie. Um, but this is one that I always went back to. Uh, you know how your parents record those nice little kindergarten graduations, kindergarten plays, and stuff. Yeah, I recorded over it for this movie. Back when you could do that, pop in that VHS tape, hit that record button, and you can record anything you want. And I recorded this, and on the box it said "Bad Trucks." Because I didn't know this movie as Maximum Overdrive. I knew it as Bad Trucks. And yes, there is another movie like this called Trucks. I've never seen it. I don't really plan on seeing it. Uh, but this has always been, you know, my go-to when I was a kid. This and, you know, Monster Squad. But this movie uh, is focused on this truck stop. And there's some weird story behind it. Uh, there's like some comet going over the earth and... and Earth gets caught in its tail, and it, for some reason, it brings all of the machines that we use in everyday life to life. Um, very interesting concept, kind of weird, kind of got like a Transformers, but in a bad vibe, you know what I mean? They're coming alive to kill us and not help us. Um, but it's, it's definitely one on the weirder side, for sure, and obviously super unbelievable, but I have such a good time with it. The deaths in this movie are actually pretty fucking cool. Um, the people get killed from things like a curling iron, which is weird, a soda machine, um, a steamroller, a semi truck, a bulldozer. All kinds of shit comes to life in, in this movie, and I have a really good time with it. And they do a really good job of not, you know, I don't know if they use remote controls to to drive these vehicles or whatnot, but you never see anybody physically driving the vehicles which is amazing and i i think it stands up pretty well so the whole story pretty much is they're trapped at this truck stop you know you got the truckers and you got the workers and then a bible salesman and, and he picked up like this runaway chick or something she goes there and then there's this newlywed couple who's out there driving around freshly married 
Um, they're obviously 100% in love. She's probably the most annoying person in this movie is the bride. Like, her voice is just nails on chalkboard, bro. Not even joking at all. But everybody's at the truck stop. You know, the trucks are outside. They won't let anybody leave. And if you're caught outside in the wrong spot, you're going to get ran over by one of the trucks or whatever's out there. Um, but the coolest truck, and you know which one I'm talking about. It's the one, the toy store truck. Got that little, like, green goblin looking thing on the front of it. He's like the leader of the pack, I guess. Um, really stands out. Obviously, hold on, let me remove myself. Right there. That is the one right there. Like I said, definitely interesting kills. Um, if you're looking for realistic, this is not for you, which I think is why a lot of people probably don't like this one. Um, but the whole point of it is to somehow escape the truck stop because they have no idea, you know, about the comet or anything. The opening scene, we're getting the drawbridge going up. All the cars are falling down. They're going in between. We got a watermelon truck. There's watermelons going all, all over the place. People getting crushed. It's amazing. Jamming out to ACDC. This soundtrack to this movie was 100% ACDC from the beginning to the end. And I'm a huge ACDC fan, and I dug the hell out of the soundtrack. So if you're into that kind of music, ACDC, you're going to love it. But this movie definitely screams 80s too, like 100% all the way around. Um, so like I said, they're trying to get out of the truck stop. You know, they, obviously they're at a D, they have a lot of diesel, so the trucks have been circling so nobody can leave and they obviously run out of gas. So then they start honking their horns and, and they communicate with the one. It's like a, this weird cart thing with a gun on it and it does Morse code and one of a son of the truck, one of the uh, gas station attendants um, find out his dad's dead, so he's all devastated and whatnot. But he comes around, and he's able to decide, decipher that this uh, this vehicle is using Morse code to communicate, letting them know that they are all out of fuel. So they let the humans go out. They fill up as many trucks as they can, and they keep going until they're all full. Um, but eventually, those trucks try to make it into the diner and the truck stop area. That's when it gets that's when it, it gets over like this. Like I started this movie. And then it's, it really felt like 30 minutes later, it was over already that quick. And it was done. Like, it flies right by. So if you're looking to pass some time, watch a goofy, fun little flick, throw this on. It's technically horror. I guess if you consider that, there's a lot of kills, so I guess. But it's not like a typical slasher or zombie. It's machines and vehicles and cars and electronics and stuff. So it's definitely very unique. And I am a huge fan. And I think... I'm a very picky person. Obviously, you guys know that if you've tuned into this channel for any period of time. So for me to like this movie, that's that's saying something. And I think you guys are really going to dig it, too. Um, and then the climax, pretty much they their, their goal is to get out of the truck stop and travel to the marina to get on a boat, obviously, to get out to the middle of the ocean where there's no electronics, no equipment, no trucks. So whatever. Um, so... They get out there, and of course, the Green Goblin toy truck magically knows where they're going, and it follows them there. It runs the one dude over who's trying to be a creep still in a dead lady's wedding ring. So good for that son of a bitch. Um, but magic, they have a bazooka with them. They turn around, blow the freaking truck the hell up. That's like the coolest weapon they got in this movie. This cool-ass bazooka that this, the freaking uh, the guy who runs uh, the gas station, his name is... Hendershot. He's a total asshole. He gives no shits about anybody in this whole place. He's pretty much there for himself. But he has like this weaponry down in the basement. AKs, machine guns, shotguns, handguns, a rocket launcher, bazooka. All kinds of weapons that, that the people arm themselves with later in the movie. I don't know why he has that many weapons. If he's like a drug dealer or some shit on the side. A weapons trafficker. But that added a definitely unique aspect to it as well. Because they're all freaking loaded and... Oh, oh, my bad. A scene that I forgot is the beginning. They go into the ATM and it's like, you're an asshole. And then on the ATM machine, machine screen, it just keeps calling this guy. And he's like, hey, honey, this machine, this ATM's calling me an asshole. Freaking lost it. My son lost it. It's hilarious. Then they go to like a diner, uh, like a burger joint later. They're walking past and it's like, human, human here, human here. And the, the kid gets up and he's like, this is for my dad, you son of a bitch. Blows it up, and he's like, I'm good. I don't want a gun no more. 
very anticlimactic ending, I will say that for sure, besides the gas station blowing up. You know, they, they blow up the Green Goblin toy truck, they get on the boat, and that's pretty much the end of the game. Credits roll. After six days, and then there's some, like, UFO exploded in space, and then... It's a fucking wacky movie, dude. It, it, it literally makes no sense. At all. But I have a really good time with it anyway. I fucking love this movie so, so very much. ACDC adds to it as well. I'm going to probably give this thing a 4 out of 5, if I'm going to be honest. Is it a 4 out of 5 quality movie? Hell no. Enjoyment-wise, yes. You will have a good time with this movie. I guarantee it. If, you, if you're a fan of this movie, if you've seen this movie, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this movie. Do you have a good time with it, or is this like one of the worst movies you've ever seen? I need to know. Leave it down in the comments below. Let's have a nice discussion. And don't forget, once again, check out the description box. And go check out... Fauci Cinema Patreon page. I am up to three so far. You will have noticed those in the beginning of this video. A lot of nice perks over there. If you get the top one, you're going to get yourself a Fauci Cinema t-shirt sent right to you. So look forward to, you know, hoping you join the Fauci loving team. You guys have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a scary day, guys.